Good afternoon, everyone. This is Chris for the 365. It's been a while since I've seen you guys, but don't worry, I'm back at it now. Uh, so I am down at Riverbend Park here in Oroville, California. It's a beautiful day out here today. And I'm down here to do a special report on the homeless situation that's been going on in Oroville. So uh, what follows will be uh, some flyover videos of a few of the homeless camps so you can kind of uh, get the scope and feel how the uh, situation is going here. I just learned today that code enforcement came down to Riverbend and uh, cleaned up some stuff. Well, Riverbend in the general uh, Feather River area down here. So actually today I'm looking around and there are very few homeless people at the park right now. Uh, I can see some families playing, some people fishing. So it actually it would be a wonderful day to come down here and actually use the park. And that's what a lot of people on social media have been talking about is getting back down and using the parks more often in order to make sure that they're used by the citizens instead of just the homeless citizens that we have here. So I just thought you'd pan you around real quick. I haven't done this in a long time. So I I kind of am loving being back down here at the Feather River. It's been a little while. I'm going to kind of hit you with the sun here for a second, but not for too long. There we go. Just kind of get you. So I'm just kind of down near the water in Riverbend Park, just down from the round, the first part roundabout there. Just kind of get a pan around here and let you see what the area is like down here. So what I was saying is what follows there was an interview uh, that uh, Janet did, our Vice Mayor Janet, uh, did a few days ago. So that video will follow this and there will be a couple flyovers of the uh, park in general, this park, from a few days ago. And I'm going to try to get a few more of the, um, of the homeless camp locations from around town for you guys. So I hope you enjoy the video. I hope it makes some people think about what the solutions could be, both good and bad, about how this goes. And I'm sure I'll have this posted up all over the place. And if you guys have any places that you would like me to go fly for you, uh, or along this situation or with the dam or anything, feel free to post that down in the comments below and I will see you guys all the next time. Bye, thank you for watching. This is the sign just as you come into Riverbend Park and as you can see there's a sign that says park closes at sunset and it has been said that that will start being enforced on uh, this next Monday to try to help with the homeless situation here at the park at Riverbend. Just thought I would show you the sign. You can read the other signs if you pause this video that has all the rules of the park on it. So there you go. I hope that this helps. Walk on top of that tree. I have been here before. Well, they cleaned us up so nicely. Hi, Chris. Hi, you guys. What was the other one's name? G Chris and Jake. Hi, you guys. Hi, so I'm Ken. I brought a couple I'm of Chris really too. nice guys. How are you Hi. guys? I Hi. told them about you, and I also brought a couple of waters for you, because I know it gets... Woo. There you go. And here's one for your dog, who is going to remain friendly, right? Yes. And so, when I walked away, you know, I had come earlier, and I let you know I was really surprised that uh, um, you didn't have a, a fair warning. So maybe you were out of the camp. And um, I asked you a couple of questions. And thank you so much for keeping your dog safe <laughs> and keeping us safe. So my question was, as I walked away from you, I thought, you could be my younger brother. You really could be. And so it broke my heart because I want to know how... What can we do to assist and support and help you? You told me that you're here all the way from Oregon. When is the last time you saw your family? How, when? A couple of months. Do they know what you're doing? And so if they were to see you like this, would your mom say, I didn't raise my boys to be like that? Because you're very intelligent. I hear that mm -hmm. by the way you speak. So something happened in your life. Can you tell, can you come up here and just tell me, like, what, what happened? I was out here, I watched my brother get murdered and then I murdered my sister. Your, your brother got murdered right in front of your eyes and then, that was a pretty traumatic experience. I can see that and, and sometimes um, it's the people, places and things that, 
that keep going around in our minds. And so I'm going to ask you this question. How old was your brother when he got murdered? He was 13. And so I bet your brother was raised just like you were, you were, right? You guys went to school and all that. And so just in terms of your brother's memory, wouldn't, would he want to see you this way? Would he want this to be a result of um, his um, being a victim? So could you do it for your brother? What is life going to look like a month from now? What are your plans in five years? I, I really want to know because I, we, we want to help. We want to help. There's services here that we can help you. Because even going back to Oregon, you're going to need some help to do that. So how can we accomplish that? You're going to go back to Oregon and work on your car? And so... And there you go. Jake, right? Jake, go back to school. Otherwise, you've got to see if you keep doing the same thing every day, nothing's going to change, right? And so you've got to have a goal. You have to have a vision, right? Do you, are you both the age where you can work? You can work. And so let's say our city had a program where we would come by pick up those that are unemployed, you're unemployed, right? And um, paid you a certain amount every hour to work on vegetation or whatever a community project looks like. Would I see you on the van in the morning? Okay, good. So I'm gonna ask you something else. I know I'm ask asking you some really tough questions but I really want to know because you're not the only ones out here. There's so many and um, it would be a disservice. Our community would be doing a disservice if we did absolutely nothing because you're somebody's child. And someday you're going to have children of your own. And I know I am not a parent, but I can, I can just imagine your mom and dad are wondering, are they safe? Where are they? Are they comfortable? Did they meet somebody along the way that would help them. So, is it a choice that you are living out here? Because there's like Oroville Rescue Mission. You can actually live indoors, right? Get um, a good meal, get a place to stay, get clothing, and you can um, look for jobs. And there are services that can help you with resumes and anything else that you need. But you have to have a willing mind you have to have determination what does that look like you have to say this far and no more i'm tomorrow is a new day you have to have an intent you have to have a goal then you have to be committed to it and then you have to have discipline so i know this is a tough conversation but if somebody was to come later on today or tomorrow pick you up and take you to the Oroville Rescue Mission where you can get back on your feet. Would you do it? No, because I don't want it. I don't really want to help in like refugees or anything like that because there is people that are praying well. Uh, that it, you, you wouldn't do it because why? Because people on Megan's Law there. There's people there that are what? On Megan's Law. On Megan's Law. Mm. Okay. And what about you? You wouldn't do it either. Okay. For the well, same reason? It, so the other people who are taking the services are, are the people that you're having problems with? Okay. Okay, well, you know what? I want to thank you for your answers. You were pretty honest. You, you didn't even have to speak to us. Is there anything that you wanted to ask? Just that I hope that you listen to uh, and give some thought to the idea of where you want to be in a couple of months and a long range a couple of years because there's some some of us in the camp, in the area are more than willing to help you and I just want to add to that I didn't introduce myself to you but my name is Janet Goodson and I am the vice mayor of the city of Oroville and so anytime you find yourself on Montgomery, anytime you say, 
this far and no more. You march yourself in the city hall and you say, I remember talking to a woman, Janet Goodson. She said she could help me and they will connect with me and I will be there. Thank you. Thank you.